Thank you very much indeed, and welcome back to the action live from the Grimsby Auditorium. <laughs> the Party Casino dot com Premier League is brought to you by Matchroom Sport. We're live on Sky Sports with the 25 second shot clock. Our referee in charge is Mr. Paul Collier. Time now to meet the players. Ladies and gentlemen, time to meet the Rocket. The one, the only, Ronnie oh, Sullivan! Well, ladies and gentlemen, he is the world number one and the reigning champion of the world. It's the Cure Thunder from down under, Neil Robertson! Good to see you, champion of the world. I must start by asking you the last time uh, we spoke. Well, no, I wasn't going to say bottom of the group yet. I will, though, obviously get to that. But the last time um, we spoke, you said that you got up about four o'clock in the morning. Your little boy woke you up. You played quite well. Did you have much sleep last night? I did, actually. I got about nine or ten hours for the first time in uh, about five months. So um, that probably means I'm going to play terrible. <laughs> well, you just mentioned it. You are bottom of the group. And also, if you lose tonight, that's it. For the world champion yes it is yeah i'll be uh sort of going home and you know not a lot to play for next week so um just trying to uh keep my chances alive really tonight you know obviously if i get a draw i'm still sort of up against it but if i can sort of pull off a good performance and maybe win then obviously it gives me a good chance has it been a strange year for you as world champion you notice more people are turning up with their a game against you um i don't know yet we haven't really played too many major tournaments you know we just had the um shanghai masters in the world open we, you know, obviously the, the World Open, I, you know, I happened to win, so um, I think that's you know sort of relaxed me really for the rest of the season. And I don't, you know, I, I haven't really noticed too much of a difference of people trying to raise their game. Really, I think, um, yeah, you know, I've, I've sort of been pretty high up in the rankings the last few years now, so I think people have kind of been doing that anyway. So um, yeah, there's not nothing too sort of major changed. Okay, you're both also a very much attacking players, both like the long shot and then clearing the table. But you obviously can't afford defeat tonight. Will you change your game at all to make sure you get that result? Um, yeah, it's quite late at night and I'm driving back home. So um, yeah, I'll probably attack a bit tonight and see how it goes. And um, yeah, you know, I couldn't play any worse than what I did last week. So that's a bonus for tonight, I guess. Okay, and finally, you a boxing fan? Uh, no, I'm not. Same. No, I'm not. So, um, yeah, I've got, I got no idea who's going to win better here. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad I spoke to both you and Ronnie about the fight. <laughs> hey, best of luck. Neil Robertson, everyone. I suppose we could stick to what they both know and love, and that's the game of snooker. And let's hand over to our boys in the box for this one. Neil Folds, and first up, Clive Everton. The Wizard from Oz versus the Rocket. And amazingly... Ronnie O'Sullivan does not currently hold any title. As quick as you can, please. Still, that may well be a temporary situation. And he's got some big tournament chances coming up, of course, including the UK Championship early next month. Thank you, the first frame. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. O'Sullivan's break off shot does not leave the cue ball as near the board cushion as he wanted. There wasn't a red worth Robertson going for though. Yeah, good shot in the end that because when he is snookered.
Yeah, I was uh, speaking earlier with Andy Goldstein about the match that these two played in the World Open final. And of course, Neil Robertson went on to win fairly comfortably. And Ronnie's comment was, well, uh, I've been what? dispatched, really. He beat me like a world number one, a world champion should. That was his view of uh, the man he was playing. Robertson is, of course, uh, still ranked uh, world number one. The ranking list Eight. for the first time this season is updated after every tournament. Nine. Including the minor ones. Sixteen. This format's slightly different, though, isn't it? I mean, uh, you mentioned that Ronnie doesn't hold a title. It's the first time since the 25 seconds of this event. We had six runnings of it under those terms. First time that Ronnie isn't the holder. He, he won the first five. 24. Beaten in the final last year by Sean Murphy. So he's always, usually, got this title to fall back on as one that he's got in the bag. 25. Of course, uh, any sort of tournament uh, with a time restriction is right up O'Sullivan Street because he's naturally so quick to eye up a shot and deliver the cue not the greatest shot from Robertson there 32. Come on, Robertson. Come on, Neil Robertson 32 left the cue ball much nearer the side cushion than intended although I still expected him to pot that red Nice atmosphere here tonight, but also a whistling wind around Grimsby, isn't there? You might hear it, actually. It's a, a rough old wind out there. Good red, but didn't stop the cue ball short of the balk line. The choice of balk colours. That was a really good effort to get round the back of the the balk colours through balk, but unfortunately he got a, a pretty unlucky little nudge on the blue there. Deserved better. Sullivan three well against Robertson you do need that cue ball tight on the bolt cushion not quite the case which means Neil has taken an interest in this long red yeah he knocks those in so running safety will need to be better one Missable cut on the yellow along the balk rail. Neil Robertson won. Preferred the certain snooker.
foul and a miss. Very unusual miscalculation that from Will O'Sullivan. Five. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he played around certainly three cushions, maybe four, but he only got as far as the blue. <laughs> Anywhere else that's more awkward than that where he can't pop the blue. How could anyone finish there? It's, uh, I guess it was an awkward little shot, really, when he's close up, just to control the cue ball, but to finish where he has is the only place on the table where he can't pop the blue. Neil Robertson won. So a slightly ragged opening. <laughs> Can't possibly leave anything to the left corner because uh, the blue is goalkeeping. Weighted safety shot. There you see the table. It's just a question of uh, occasionally on these safety shots, some of the reds that are up the table a little bit get in the way. The one at the bottom of your screen is the one that just might be hampering. He's got to go the other side now. <coughs> Good shot, that. The safety jewel already up to three minutes and uh, the way the blue is situated there is the possibility that this frame will require a re-rack. Yeah there's not a lot that either player can do really with uh, the blue there and the red next to it. They have to play safety shots that leave those two covering the pocket that's not necessarily helped. I mean, Neil wouldn't want to re-rack with a, a lead of 36 points. So he might be the player that uh, is the aggressor of the two. Uh, 36 points, I know, is not a lot, but you wouldn't want to re-rack with that sort of lead in a frame like this. And sometimes it comes down to the player, to the referee rather than the players in this situation. I mean, I don't think their eyes are going to meet and say let's have a re-rack, but if it did get a little bit of a stalemate, which is not at that stage yet, then it would be down to the referee to say you've got so many shots to put this, this frame straight really and make things happen, but that would be a way down the line a bit. 
Let me ask you, Neil, do you think there's a case for altering the rules so that if there is a re-rack, the scores are carried forward? I've heard that said before. I think you, have heard you said that before. I think it's a possibility. And that way, at least, the player with uh, the lead wouldn't be so reluctant. But certainly, when you get a lot of red balls over a, a pocket with a, a colour stopping them going in, then that's when you do get a situation like this. And these are, you know, as far as the, the game of snooker is concerned, these are the two <coughs> as attacking as anybody. So it shows you it's where the balls go sometimes, not the kind of play that we're seeing. That was a pretty uh, aggressive shot from O'Sullivan there. Which just moved the blue a fraction. I think that will go. I'm not sure what's going to happen with the cue ball because it's pretty straight this. So no re rack he right. should be on the black here actually. So that ended the six minute safety duel. Yeah, he needed that one in with uh, the mid range red now for O'Sullivan. Talking about. Uh, uh, Safety duels, I mean, in the grand scheme of this game, a six-minute safety duel is not a long one, Clive. We've seen a lot longer over the years, haven't we? Well, we certainly have, but it's quite, quite long for Premier League. No, I completely agree. I'm sure they, in the match that finished at 3.51 in the morning in the World Championships between Thorburn and Griffiths, there was a few safety battles that lasted more than six minutes, I'd say. Sixteen. Immediately, uh, Sullivan is back in the frame. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Yes, looking back, <coughs> the black that uh, Robertson missed after coming out on top in that uh, long safety duel could be crucial could cost him the frame 30 although uh, 31 there's still a couple of problems for O'Sullivan to overcome that's how he tackled the first one 37. 38. Yeah, played quite well that shot actually. Appreciated not only the pot left handed but the fact that he, he finished top side of the black which makes position so easy. 45. 46. Once again leaving an angle, finishing deliberately low on the black. This should take him up for the yellow nicely. 53. Anything but a full ball 53. kiss on that brown, he'd have been fine. Pot is still on, it's a bit thinner than it may have looked from the overhead there, but again left handed. Thank 
65. And only green and brown needed. Yeah, how quickly this frame has changed. 58. Seems about two or three minutes ago we were talking about a re rack but Sullivan has quickly put it to bed. 67. <laughs> 73. It took a long time for a chance to come along for O'Sullivan. But when it did, he seized it superbly and cleared the table with 80 to lead by a frame to nil. And both players have called for a cup of hot water to warm their hands on. Apparently it's cold in the arena. I can't say the same for the commentary box. No, it's uh, pretty warm in here. Yeah, the frame, like the previous ones, just gone a little bit scrappy. Yes, the previous one was eventually sorted out by O'Sullivan with the... Uh, a superb 80 clearance that red was possible to middle but uh, it was missable and uh, he would have had absolutely no idea with the cue ball careering into the bunch where everything was going to finish had a six minute safety duel in the last frame and we're starting this one with another Foul. six minute Near safety exchange four. well <laughs> Sullivan declared a foul on himself there <coughs> take a chance for position One. well this was Ronnie calling a foul on himself that hardly anybody else actually saw just touched it maybe the hairs on his hand anything just brushed against the brown which is a foul nice that players are able to declare fouls on themselves still in this game tapping the table in appreciation of such a thing he'd have done the same that's for sure He's uh, got the angle, but not wonderful queuing. He's needed to be off straight. He can just about get his cue to it, actually.
But to, once this red is potted, of course, if he can get on the black later on, it will go back onto its own spot, which will 14. open things up. This won't come from here, though, because I don't think he can hold for the black from that red that's on the black spot. And I didn't want the other kiss on the red on 15. the way through. If he's going to keep the break alive, it'll be probably pink to the middle, but he might even decide it's just worth playing safe. Blue ball. Neil Robertson, 15. The Robertson safety OK, although, of course, it would have been better if it had been more behind the brown. It looks like he's, uh, well, he's eyed up a plant. Whether he can get to it or whether he's not wanting to leave it, I don't know, but something to the right corner interested him. Well, you can see what it was now, but it was all a bit, a bit of a blur. And it wasn't that one, I can tell you, the one that eventually went in. One. Well, it's not so much the fluke, but what comes after it. Six. And it looks as if nothing is going to come after it. Sullivan six. Well, it was a pretty brave shot to take on as it happens, and he's got a shot at the pink, which probably deserves, actually. Match not really come alive just yet, but you feel that Seven. if the balls were to run kindly, it would do. Eight. Misjudged, no easy shot now onto the next red. He wanted to be straight on this pink. Flirted with the middle pocket. 14. <laughs> 15. Twenty-one. Twenty-seven. Once he's into a break, O'Sullivan doesn't look as if he's ever going to miss. It's just the shots to get in. 28. Which uh, sometimes trip him up. Again, he would have preferred to have been much straighter on the pink. 
Uh, that's uh, an excellent shot, and he played that to perfection. Always the worry the middle pocket was getting up and coming to play here. Four. And he was not going to finish on the red, but he just avoided the bump, as you saw there. 35 41 42 Well, as it happens the black has finished invitingly, but uh, his intended colour was the pink. He's got to find a route, hasn't he? Uh, it's not a, a natural shot, really, from uh, the black, but so Ronnie is so good to find a way. He's, he's going to be unfortunate here. Uh, it really is bad luck. It's 49. a good effort. At least he could have finished on the red at the other side of the table, but no way he can cue that one. So the frame not dead yet. Ronnie well, O'Sullivan, 49. <laughs> to lead by 36. he uh, could have possibly One. actually played the plant or what but I suppose he's unlucky not to be on something easier you can always leave one of those right over the pocket but uh, where the keyboards finish is the most alarming thing because otherwise it was a great chance you can just nudge him behind the yellow but he'd like to have the chance himself really Neil Robertson won the open red for an escape he didn't really want the uh, the other red out in the open so it makes the uh, the clearance very difficult but at least here in playing safe he pushes the the safe red up the table Sullivan manoeuvred the cue ball pretty cleverly there but um, there's still a long pot on for Robertson and a possible clearance well, Ronnie with a chance here to <laughs> clinch the frame red to the left centre on the back of this shot which he uh, got fairly close to I wonder if there's a sting in the tail of this frame. It's a frame that you, Ronnie's always looked like winning, but he hasn't quite got there yet. And let's be honest, that, that there's nothing awkward on the table should the chance come. Robertson is a bit unlucky Bye not man. to get a chance there because once O'Sullivan missed the red, it could have gone anywhere. Could so easily have finished in a possible position. Robertson has taken his first time out. Can't do anything 
with the red on the board cushion. No, he's probably got to play cushion first into this red and hope to push it up the table. If he gets a full ball contact, then it's not bad. Cue ball stays where it is, possibly goes behind the black. Don't see any other shot, really. I think he's just got to play it and get it. Full ball contact would be pretty good. He'd be reasonably happy with that. He's hidden up the red, I think. The blue's in the way. Which means that uh, the chance is not there when it might have been. That's the second slight piece of fortune for O'Sullivan. Sullivan 35 in front. One red and his opponent would need a snooker. That was a pretty good shot actually. It was similar to the shot in the opposite pocket from the other end. One. That he didn't get. He's been uh, well, yes, Sutherland so fairly one. subdued tonight, but he's been quite happy to play a, a waiting game and a tactical game, and it looks like he will get that 2-0 lead with Neil requiring a snooker and in a snooker. And it's looking wow. particularly grim now in this frame. Only well, Sullivan four. No miss called because Robertson already needed a snooker. Sullivan's played pretty solidly in these first Five. two frames. Seven. He's, he's not missed anything which could be called an easy ball. Missed a few 50-50s. But uh, pretty sound all round. 93% pot success rate. 14. So it's two frames to O'Sullivan, 2 0. And if Robertson is going to come out of this with a victory, 25. he's got to win four frames in succession. Twenty-five on the frame, Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan leads Neil Robertson by two frames to nil. Good news for O'Sullivan. Bad news for Robertson's chances of qualifying. Only O'Sullivan to break. There is the league table, in fact. Yeah, a league table that uh, about three weeks, weeks ago, Ronnie O'Sullivan was propping up. Hadn't won a match. He'd drawn his first three, but uh, unsurprisingly, he's, uh, his fortunes have improved, given his uh, previous in this tournament.
Sullivan's had a slightly lower profile in this this year's league as well in that you know, he's not defending champion and not world champion we've got the uh, world champion is his opponent tonight so he's kind of been much quieter which doesn't really harm him I don't think Four. now it looks like from overhead that he might just be on one there he's definitely on a red it's just a question of whether he can pot that red and get onto the black goes into the other red on the way through well that's uh, he's avoided the other red it's a pretty good effort you know half the panel on the black the only thing is the angle on it is not ideal that's uh, a better shot than it looks 12 Thirteen. Twenty. And, uh, well, I think that's exactly how he played it, the cannon and the screw that was on it, perfect on the blue. So when he's starting to get going now, that shot 26 27 34. Uh, he's got awkward queuing. That tells a story. Look at that, 93%. Robertson down on 79. That there's a big gap there, and 2 0 and possibly 3 0. That would explain why. 35. O'Sullivan has potted. Uh, one out of two of every long pot that he's undertaken. Robertson, only four out of ten for long pots. Forty. Not his usual sort of percentage. No, and it's the one part of Ronnie's game that he believes is now his weak link, I think. His uh, long potting doesn't quite match up, but unfortunately he got a terrible kick there. And that's something you just can't Ronnie legislate for. He, he can't quite believe that. Yeah. That really jumped. And he was just going so well, Clyde, wasn't he? Well, oh, look at that. Well, he was on 40. A lot more apparently to come. He's still in your time, yeah. I suppose a crumb of comfort was that he didn't leave anything. Ronnie O'Sullivan, four. <coughs> Nothing on from the D, though. A 
immediately O'Sullivan plays his safety in such a way that he gets the cue ball over the awkward side of the table although not that awkward because uh, Robertson could attempt that red without fear of cannoning another yeah, and the full ball kiss on the yellow Clive has left the red on so it was a bit unfortunate in the end to leave it and nothing happening for Robertson One. at all really tonight he's never really played he's not had a load of chances but the ones he has had he squandered Have you got any theories, Neil, about why Robertson so rarely manages to produce his best in the league? Seven. Three wins out of 16 matches played over three campaigns. Don't know. He just struggles. He, in every other form of the game, he's got it mastered. And I thought maybe this would be the year when Eight. he got to grips with the league and the way it's played. But it's not happened again. No theories at all because I've watched him play in the Championship League, which is a similar format albeit shortened into a couple of days and he's played some great stuff up there up at Crondon Park but just can't seem to quite 13. put it together Fourteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Right-handed, left-handed, makes very little difference. Frame ball this, Clive, so it's looking very much like Ronnie gets at least a point out of tonight. 26. And to be honest, the way things have been going, I feel that we get both points. 27. Robertson's fortunes might change, but it's one way traffic really since the first frame. O'Sullivan is outpointing Robertson 239 to 60. Thirty. Thirty-six. So Sullivan is going to be three nil up. Thirty-seven. And uh, Robertson's chances of qualifying for the four-man playoffs are rapidly disappearing. 44 45 I can't see him getting a draw tonight not the way things are going and even a win next week would 51 almost certainly not be enough 52 57 59 62 66 
71. Seventy seven, very, very strong. Ronnie O'Sullivan. Ronnie O'Sullivan makes breaks of forty and eighty four. He administers the whitewash in the third frame. He leads Neil Robertson by three frames to nil and is certain of at least one point. Ronnie O'Sullivan has secured his place in the playoffs on the November 27-28 by taking a 4-0 lead Frame over Neil five. Robertson. Ronnie O'Sullivan to break. Who won't be at Hopton on Sea for that weekend. Yes, and uh, with Ronnie winning, that is Murphy through absolutely guaranteed also. There's still one place up for grabs. Robertson, though, heavy defeat here would certainly not help his chances, even if he wins next week. That's the first ball that Robertson has potted for 27 minutes. He's had to endure a couple of whitewashes in the third and fourth frames. <coughs> Four. Played for red to right corner but when he overran he's got this one to middle five well he can play the little screw shot perhaps and just lost the other Ten. red to the left of the black Nineteen. Having to take the cute ball through the bunch of reds, he couldn't be sure where it was going to finish. Awkward little cut back this. shot he uh, may have one to the left center and Robertson 26. really needs to win these two frames to give himself any chance don't forget he did have a 6-0 win earlier on in the league against Ding Jin Wee time out so that's helping his frame difference but 6-0 or 5-1 here no good kind of undoes all the good work from that match that's tight time out called I think with a, just a touch of left hand side he can make the angle if he's not already on. Yeah, just, a, just a touch of side on that. 27. Just swing the cube a little wider. Thirty-three. Robertson making a last-ditch effort to get a couple of frames on the board to give himself 34. some sort of chance from his last match at Clandudno next Thursday. 
and of course even that would depend on Selby losing to O'Sullivan if Selby gets the win I think that's him through any kind of point there so it's not looking good 41 42 <coughs> would rather not be straight 49 Neil Robertson, 49. Just trying to force an angle from an unsuitable putting angle. <coughs> the, the machine's broken down. One. I'm sure that when Robertson missed on 49, he was fearing the worst, but uh, four. Uh, Sullivan missed uh, a straightish pot to far corner. Five. So this is as good an opportunity as Robertson could have wished for to clinch this frame to avoid the dreaded whitewash and uh, still give Nine. himself an outside chance of uh, appearing in the four-man playoffs yeah he's just got going a bit too late he, he literally played no part really in this match a little bit of the first frame but nothing since then and all of a sudden now the match is over he has played a little bit better but that's just the way it goes he didn't get many chances and Ronnie was not spectacular in those frames but just very efficient 13 and O'Sullivan is of course undefeated in the league this season now the frame yeah, is Robinson not 13. absolutely guaranteed one snooker required but <coughs> that would have absolutely clinched it one rather a demoralized sort of shot I thought uh, the pink was yeah I mean if that goes in Ronnie doesn't even come back to the table Eight. Twenty-four. 
O'Sullivan made sure from those reds that he kept on the black because uh, having done so he's reduced the deficit to 30 points and can win with one Only successful four point snooker no, it's a very good shot he played actually on the black to take him <coughs> all around the table to give him that chance got the cue ball on a sixpence there in behind the yellow and you can see Neil possibly going around the back of this it's one of those shots well didn't see him potting it but there you are who really could deny him that two head to frame one it looks like he will win it now it puts O'Sullivan to two snookers needed Neil Robertson two and the frame so Robertson gets off the mark and takes the fifth frame but still trails by four frames to one it's uh, O'Sullivan's night Neil Robertson to break there is uh, the updated league table Robertson stuck to the bottom of the table he could still qualify if he won his last match at Mandodno next week but he's also dependent on the other result Time out. I think something's on the cue ball, maybe, and uh, that's why he's had the time out. Little insect or a bit of dust or something, which he right in his line of sight. Maybe one of those insects we had at Penrith a few weeks ago has uh, made the journey. Well, it was a brave shot to take on, especially when there was no guaranteed colour. And with the red going over a pocket, he's got to knock this pink in. Seven. Eight. Fifteen. Sixteen. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. <coughs> 
30. And this red will clear the black to both pockets. It's looking quite promising at the moment, this break. 31. He certainly played a lot better since he lost those first four frames. You do see that sometimes when the pressure comes off somebody that their game improves and so far Neil has looked to, well, a lot better. I guess also the other thing is he's world champion and he feels that even though he's lost this match he has to acquit himself in such a way which is never a bad thing to see. A little bit of extra responsibility on his shoulders this season, maybe. 39. You've also got to say that uh, he couldn't really do much about the third and fourth frames because uh, Sullivan was absolutely deadly. Breaks of 40, 84, and 130. Well, that's right, he, he was more lacklustre in the first couple of frames and uh, Ronnie got away from him and that was that. 46. But like you say, he's not played that badly, really. In these short matches you can get that, you can almost find yourself just not getting a chance. Fifty-two. His first half century of the evening. Prize, but I couldn't see any reason why he missed it to its intended pocket. 59. I think he might have snatched at it a bit, a bit jabby. The shot looked in the end, or well, certainly fast through the ball. But either way, because he missed the pot originally, as Ronnie getting out of his chair, the positional side also went wrong. One, running now back to the table. And, well, it's not inconceivable to clear up here. One. Fifteen. Sixteen. Twenty-three. It's an excellent chance, 24. this. He's just developed the two reds slightly. The red down the left cushion. Ronnie will probably play left-handed if he doesn't play the cannon to get it out. 31. 32. It was short of speed, so he might have to go into the pink, which is not what he wanted to do. Might be able to avoid it. Yeah, just managed to escape hitting the pink. 40. Now, the angle he's got, if it's quite a straightish angle here, he'll just drop in behind it. Can play the cannon if he wants to. 
and uh, he's nudged it closer to the pocket. 45. Beautiful. Very nicely done. And when he came to the table, you felt that there was always the chance he'd clear up. He probably wasn't favoured at the time. He's favoured to win it now. Fifty-two. Fifty-four. O'Sullivan's played very well this evening. Hasn't missed anything at close range or medium range. He's missed a few long ones. Fifty-seven. But he's made breaks of 80, 49, 40, 84, 130. Sixty-one. And in reply to... Robertson's initial 59 in this frame. He's about to clear up with another major effort. 66. 72. Robertson made 59. Today Sullivan clears up with 79 to complete his highly impressive 5-1 victory. Yeah, sublime Ronnie O'Sullivan there. Just exceptional, wasn't he? Uh, confirmation of both of our matches tonight. Sean Murphy, defending champion, beating Mark Williams. That effectively ended his chances of making it to finals weekend. And we've just seen the world champion and world number one being completely outclassed by an in-form rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan, by five frames to one. All that means this is how the Premier League now looks. Marco Fu qualified. The rocket, Ronnie O'Sullivan, qualified. Defending champion, Sean Murphy, has qualified. But, mathematically speaking, Neil Robertson, providing results go his way next week, if Ronnie beats Mark Selby, and then Neil gets a result, the right result, uh, over Sean Murphy. In theory, Neil Robertson, the world champion, can still make it to finals weekend. Or in theory, they could both lose 6-0, and Mark Williams could actually book his place in finals weekend. Still all to play for. Well, that's it for tonight. Thanks for watching. It's been a great night. 